Hey there, guys. So I want to thank you for taking the time to view today's live stream as always. So before we get started, I do want to mention a few things. Um, there have been quite a few things that I've been working on here recently that I sort of want to discuss and sort of mention. So there's a video that I've been working on this week um, that's going to be about basically food labels and sort of how to identify macronutrients on food labels and sort of discuss a little bit about reading food labels. That's sort of the video that I've been working on this week. I'm working on trying to get it uploaded this week. It may not be uploaded this week, but I'm trying to get it out and give you guys some new content. Um, this is going to be, of course, a long form video. It's not going to be like a short. Um, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you guys. I wanted to use a different topic and sort of dive a little bit deeper into it with this type of video. So I do hope you find it helpful. Um, again, I will likely have it uploaded this week or within the next week. Um, so definitely watch out for that. And I do want to mention my website still going strong. It's bponlinefitness.com. Again, you can check out a ton of information related to online coaching there. I should have the um, address for the website at the end of this presentation that you can see. Um, so if you do want the link to that, feel free to let me know and I will get that out to you. So I just wanted to mention that. Again, just watch for that video. I will have it posted pretty soon. Um, I just have to start editing it. And then again, check out my website. You can sign up to the email newsletter that I send out each week, as well as get updates on any of the latest live streams that I do throughout the week. Um, so definitely check that out. So with all that being said, guys, let's go ahead and talk about today's topic, which is maximizing results with supersets and circuits. So I'm going to sort of go over these two different key points in this particular live stream. So as we're getting started here, I do want to mention sort of the topics that will be discussed. So what we're going to talk about here is what supersets and circuits are, the benefits of supersets and circuits, the types of supersets and circuits, and when to use supersets and circuits. So it's pretty self-explanatory what we're going to be talking about. And we're just going to sort of go over basically the two aspects of these particular topics in, in particular. So what we're going to start with first is what are supersets and circuits. So supersets basically involves performing two exercises back to back with little to no rest between them. These exercises can target the same muscle group or different ones depending on the goal of the workout. A circuit is a series of exercises performed one after another, usually with minimal rest between each set or each exercise, I should say. And the circuit typically involves four to eight exercises that work different muscle groups or mix strength and cardio based movements. So supersets are and circuits are definitely unique in their own right. Again, supersets in simple terms is basically two exercises that are performed back to back, of course, and likely they are exercises that are sort of in the same muscle group. A lot of times supersets will be, you know, for example, you may have a workout that's more of, let's say a chest workout that is an incline dumbbell chest press. And then you may actually superset that with another chest workout that targets the chest in order to sort of maximize the sort of the amount of time in your workouts and sort of allows you to get more done in a shorter period of time when it comes with supersets. And because when you're focusing just in general on a simple set, it's going to take a little bit longer because you're going to have an extended rest period, of course, between each set. And again, this is something, you know, like I mentioned last week, um, even though we're talking about a different top gear, it's all dependent on your goal, whether you're doing this type of, you know, training method. 
Um, so supersets are not going to be for everybody, just like circuits are not going to be for everybody. So going into circuits, again, it's circuits are just a series of exercises. You are having minimal rest, but you're not having basically no rest. You are having at least minimal rest between each exercise and it's sort of going into various workouts. This could be a full body based workout. A lot of times a circuit can be done in that way. Um, because you are doing so many exercises, you could incorporate a lot of full body based movements in a circuit. And again, this is this can be for somebody who is strapped on time too, because when it comes to a circuit, a lot of times, you know, and even, you know, this is kind of relates to an interval in a way, but intervals are somewhat different. Um, but with a circuit, it basically allows you, you're doing a specific set of workout for a specific duration of time, and then you're moving through the workout. So it's it's just a shorter time frame that you have with this particular training method. And it's going to be very beneficial for somebody who has a busy schedule. Both of these are actually pretty beneficial in that way. So keep that in mind. So I know I just sort of touched on a little bit of the benefits, but I do want to give you a good visual on what the benefits are. So the benefits of supersets, of course, is that it saves time. You do two exercises back to back without resting. So your workout finishes faster. It makes workouts tougher. By doing exercises with no rest, your heart rate goes up, which helps burn more calories and improve fitness. Another benefit here is it builds more muscle. Doing two exercises for the same muscle group makes your muscles work harder, which helps them grow stronger and bigger as you progress. Um, so again, if you're somebody who's strapped on top and who has a pretty busy schedule, supersets can be a great option. You just need to make sure that the type of su supersets you put together are coinciding with sort of what you're focusing on, you know, and what particular group of, you know, muscles you're working that day. So if you're doing a split, a training split that focuses on back and biceps, you want to have two workouts that are going to complement each other when you're doing that superset. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. So what are the benefits of circuit training? So this is an efficient full body workout, like I sort of mentioned earlier. A lot of these circuit-based training can be full body based. So it's gonna target multiple muscle groups in one session, maximizing time. It's also gonna improve cardiovascular health because it's combining strength and cardio to boost that heart health and endurance. A lot of times with circuits, they're pretty, they can be pretty fast paced and as you go through the workout. So it's gonna not only focus on your strength, but also improving that cardiovascular health. And in turn, you're gonna increase calorie burn. So high intensity circuits elevate heart rate and metabolism, promoting fat loss. Another thing too, is that it's gonna build strength and endurance. So incorporating resistance exercises to improve muscular strength while maintaining that stamina. Again, you're basically getting the best of both worlds. You're getting that cardio-based exercise, you're focusing on targeting the full body, and then at the same time, you're also helping to improve your strength and endurance. And that's really great if you're, again, you know, if you're really strapped on time, this is another great method to keep in mind. And again, you're just performing these workouts, you know, in a circuit, you're going through four day workouts, and you're targeting, you know, specific muscles for those specific workouts. So I do want to go over a little bit further. Again, we're sort of going, diving deep into these two topics and sort of comparing and contrasting the difference between them. So continuing on the tops of supersets. So there's various tops of supersets. And I sort of mentioned earlier that you do want to have supersets that sort of complement each other, basically, like I just mentioned. So there's three different ones that I want to mention here. And um, I know that there's more that could be discussed as well, but I do want to mention these. So antagonistic superset is the first one. So this pairs exercises for opposing muscle groups, so biceps and triceps or chest and back. So the benefit of this is it balances muscle work and promotes recovery between sets. So an example, 
would be a bench press, which is targeting the chest, while you're doing a barbell row, which is targeting the back. So the antagonistic, again, it's opposite. So these, these workouts, they are opposite, but they are still complementing each other because you're doing them in a pair. So like the biceps and triceps, that is both arm-based workouts. So those are going to really complement each other, even though they are opposite. You know, they're opposite sides of the muscle that you're targeting. You're still getting a really good workout. Same with chest and back. The chest and the back are directly opposite each other, but it's in that same sort of muscle area. And so you're getting an overall balanced routine. And another thing too, is this is gonna help with muscle imbalances because you are specifically, you know, sort of targeting these two opposing sides, you're going to have a lot of, you know, balance between those muscles and it's gonna pre prevent those muscle imbalances. So an agonistic superset combines exercises targeting the same muscle group. So in the same way, you know, these are complementing each other, even though, I mean, it works the same way. Even though we're doing an opposing superset or antagonistic, I should say, and working those opposing muscles, they're still complementing each other. The same can be said with agonistic superset. So again, that's combining exercises targeting the same muscle group, so the benefit of this is it increases muscle fatigue and maximizes growth. Now, I know you see muscle fatigue and you're thinking, you know, that sounds bad, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Muscle fatigue is necessary in order to help with muscle growth as well as helping with muscle repair and recovery. So an example of these would be squats and lunges. Again, it's workouts that are with the same sort of muscle group. You could do various workouts. This is you know, for example, another workout, let's say we're doing something with the triceps. You're doing like a tricep extension as well as sort of a tricep pull down, push down, same sort of difference. You're using those same muscles, but performing the workout rapidly in succession between each other. So that's what you're going to notice, you know, with the agonistic superset is that you're just combining two of the same sort of muscle group and doing that workout as a superset, which means mental rest between the sets. So pre-exhaust superset is a little bit different. So this one starts with the isolation exercise followed by compound movement. Again, this is the same concept. So when it comes to compound and isolation, I've mentioned this before. But this is the same sort of concept. It's it's structured in a way to where you're getting a good workout, even if it is targeting a different muscle group, or even if we're focusing on isolation and compound, it's the same thing. They're sort of complementing each other. As long as the workouts are complementing each other, that's what matters. So the benefits is this exhausts the muscle with isolation and then pushes it further with a compound lift. So for example, this would be a dumbbell chest fly along with push-ups. So again, compound and oscillation, basically what a compound workout is, is that it's targeting multiple muscle groups all at once. And then an oscillation is specifically oscillating a particular muscle. A lot of times, you know, with this workout, with the workouts with oscillation, you've got a anything that's really more of the dumbbell fly that's going to be more oscillation because it's targeting the chest whereas with the push-up you're using a little bit more muscles and so that's going to be compound another example you could keep in mind is that a bench press would be considered a compound based workout because you're you are targeting the chest of course but you're also using of course your shoulders to perform the workout as well as your arms so you're using multiple muscle groups in order to perform that specific workout. That's what compound is. Oscillation is very much oscillating a particular part of the body. Anything that's oscillating the chest, focusing in on that particular muscle of the chest, that's oscillation. You know, like tricep extension, that's an example of oscillation. You know, bicep curl, you know, is specifically targeting that muscle, and that's an oscillation based workout. So again, the pre-exhaust superset is starting with oscillation. So you're starting with a 
particular muscle group that you're wanting to hone in on. So this is, you know, bicep curl, tricep extension. This is a, you know, a chest flop. So you're honing in on that particular muscle and then you're using a compound movement, which is going to target multiple muscles in order to lead to that exhaustion. So that's something to keep in mind with this particular superset. So types of circuit training. There are a ton of different types of circuit training beyond what is mentioned here. So the first top is strength circuit training. This top focuses on building muscle strength and endurance. It typically involves weighted exercises targeting different muscle groups in each round. Cardio circuit training is for those to improve cardiovascular endurance and burn calories. Cardio circuits are ideal. This top incorporates high energy exercises that elevate the heart rate quickly. Full body circuit training is a balanced approach that works every major muscle group in one session. This top is highly effective for overall fitness and functional strength. You'll move from one exercise to the next, ensuring the muscle is left, ensuring no muscle is left behind. Functional strength is basically, I do want to mention that and sort of expand upon what functional strength is. Functional strength is basically you improving your strength of daily activities. So outside of a structured workout per se. So with functional strength, this is just basically any activity that you do in day-to-day -day life that you perform. This allows you to basically be able to perform those activities more effectively. Whether you're doing stuff around the house, um, whether you're you know working, anything that you do for your particular type of job, that's basically what the functional strength means is that you're improving your activity and movement and strength in everyday life when you're performing this specific type of circuit training. Sports specific circuit training is designed to mimic in a specific sport or activity. The circuit involves or helps improve athletic performance and focuses on agility, speed, power, and endurance. So the sports specific training with for a circuit would be really rapid sort of exercises. You got like drill based exercises as well as just quick, you know, sort of, I guess you would say like a relay top exercises. Really, speed, agility, quickness is sort of the name of the game with this top of circuit training. You're doing really sort of fast based, fast paced, as well as based fast based movement patterns so that's basically what the sport specific circuit training is again this is all based on any of your particular goals you you can pretty much do a circuit training based on any particular goal you're going after again strength is focusing on muscle strength and endurance if that's your particular goal you can incorporate that into your routine and focus primarily on that Cardio circuit, if you're wanting to burn more calories, if you're wanting to improve cardiovascular endurance, that's the main part of cardio circuit training. And then full body is if you want an overall sort of full body routine that's helping that functional strength and overall fitness. That's what you're going to get with that. So tailoring supersets based on strength-based goals. So an antagonistic superset, like we just mentioned, pairs exercises that target opposing muscle groups. Bench press for chest and rows for back. This allows for recovery of one muscle group while the other works minimizing fatigue and maximizing strength output. So the rep and weight for, again, we're tailoring this based on the strength-based goals. So we're gonna use heavy rate around 75 to 90% of your one rep max, and then perform low reps, four to six reps per set. So this is primarily focusing on lifting heavy weights, while having sort of a low rep range. And your one rep max is basically performing sort of the maximum amount of reps that you can perform. That's a, that is what a warm rep max is. So you wanna get around 70 to 90% of your one rep max in that weight that you're lifting. And again, we're, we're focusing on lower reps. A lot of you know my particular goals that I focus on, I usually focus on a little bit of lower reps myself, and then I focus primarily on heavy weights. Now I'm not necessarily doing supersets, but this is aligns a lot with my routine. 
Now I do a little bit more than four to six reps, but usually I try to stay in the low rep range while lifting heavier weights. And so that's primarily my goal most of the time is that I do the heavy weights with low reps. So if your focus is strength-based goals, this is a good superset to sort of follow there. So tailoring supersets based on hypertrophy-based goals. So muscle hypertrophy, of course, relies on volume and time under tension, so supersets should maximize muscle fatigue. Talking about hypertrophy, hypertrophy is all about building muscle. It's not necessarily just about the strength, but just the aesthetic appearance, muscle itself. So this type of training method, you would do an agonistic, agonist superset, and use two exercises targeting the same muscle group, which would be barbell curls along with hammer curls. So again, we're targeting using the same sort of muscles. So if you're doing a bicep workout, you're combining it with another bicep workout. And another thing too, is that you could do an antagonistic superset. So another option is alternating between opposing muscle groups, chest and back to maintain intensity while giving each group slot rest. Reps and weight. So for hypertrophy itself, you want to use moderate weight around 65 to 75 percent of your one rep max and then aim for eight to 12 reps per exercise to create enough time and retention for muscle growth your rest should be between 60 to 90 seconds between each set superset to maintain intensity so when we're talking about between each superset this is between after you go through your first superset, which again is those combined group of muscles for that duration of time, then you want to have at least 60 to 90 seconds between that group of workout until you go into your next superset. So that's what that's meaning there. Even though a superset is primarily focused on that minimal rest, we're focusing on the exercises past that specific superset. So again, moderate weight, you don't want to use anything too heavy, something that's pretty much comfortable for you to lift, but it's still challenging enough to lift. And then you want to aim for eight to 12 reps per exercise to create enough time and retention for muscle growth. So tailoring circuit training based on strength goals. So we're doing the direct opposite here. So we're talking, we just talked about supersets based on strength and hypertrophy. What we're going to talk about now is how you can tailor circuit training based on strength goals. So you can include three to five compound exercises like squats, deadlifts, bench press, and pull-ups to target multiple large muscle groups. You can use heavy weights, 75 to 90% of your one rep max, with low reps, four to six reps per exercise. This is almost identical to the superset in a way um, because we're focusing again on the heavy weights as well as the low reps. So you want to rest between exercises should be 90 seconds. So this is 90 to two minutes. So this is between each exercise that you're doing in a circuit. This is different than interval. So like I mentioned earlier, interval training is more of going, doing a specific workout for a specific duration of time and then going into the next workout. So you're having sort of a time, you're basically basing it on time. Whereas circuits, you are doing that sort of method but you're actually having at least a good amount of rest between you know that specific workout so again you want to rest between exercises around 90 to two minutes to allow for sufficient recovery and maintaining lifting intensity this is very important keep in mind because it can help with what you can lift in the next set of workouts so keep that in mind especially focusing on strength-based goals so tailoring circuit training based on hypertrophy-based goals, circuit structure. So you want to select five to six exercises combining compound and oscillation movements. This could be squats, dumbbells, chest press, bicep curls. And you're going to perform moderate weights, again, very much identical to, you know, the supersets that we mentioned with hypertrophy. So you're performing moderate weights. 65 to 75% of your one rep max with 8 to 12 reps per exercise. And then you're going to rest between exercises and your rest is going to be a little bit shorter. So you're doing 30 to 60 seconds to maintain intensity and keep the muscles under consistent tension. So hypertrophy is a little bit different. So keep in mind that with strength-based goals, you're going to use lower reps 
while having heavier weight. And you're going to want to have a little bit longer rest with those workouts because you are, you know, exerting more weight, of course. So it's going to require more energy to perform those workouts. So you need a longer rest. Whereas with hypertrophy, you're using weights that you can comfortably lift, but that's challenging enough for you to do 8 to 12 reps in the exercise. So you, again, you're going to rest between 30 to 60 seconds to maintain that intensity. So that's sort of the difference. Just sort of identify strength training as focusing primarily on heavy weights with low reps and then hypertrophy as focusing on moderate weight with a little bit with more rest, of course, and a higher amount of reps. Alrighty guys, so that's all I have for you today. I really thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you found, or live stream I should say, and I hope that you found it valuable and helpful. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out and let me know. My website again is bponlinefitness.com. I've got it here at the bottom left corner of the screen. If you do have any questions about anything on my website as well, you can feel free to reach out and I will answer your question there. I will have another live stream. I'm working on the presentation for that um, this week as well. And I will have that live stream going for you guys next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm looking forward to sharing this next topic with you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about foam rolling as well as uh, self-myofascial release. So this is a really good topic. I think that's going to be beneficial if, you know, for helping with recovery from your workouts, as well as incorporating it as a part of your workout routine, such as a cool down phase or even a warm up phase. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about in this next live stream. And I'll have that event posted at least by the end of the week where you can RSVP to it. But thank you guys for taking the time to watch this live stream. And I hope you find it helpful and valuable. I hope that, you know, it allows you to think about some things, especially as it relates to your goals, allows you to sort of understand supersets a little bit better as well as circuit training. Um, so that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let me know. But once again, guys, I'll see you guys in the next live stream at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time next Wednesday. So thank you guys.